Good morning and welcome to the sixth me meeting in 2016 of the SPPA committee. Uh, can I remind everyone to switch mobile phones and other devices to silent? Uh, the first item on our agenda this morning is cross-party groups and we will be taking evidence from Gordon MacDonald MSP on the proposed CPG on independent convenience stores and then from Jackson Carnell MSP on the proposed CPG on building bridges with Israel. So I'd like to firstly welcome Mr MacDonald to the committee this morning and I'd like to invite you to make an opening statement about the proposed CPG. Thank you, Convener, and thanks for the opportunity to attend the committee and highlight the need for a cross-party group on independent convenience stores. In session four, there were 85 cross-party groups registered, and yet despite that large number, there was no CPG focusing on retailing, and in particular the independent convenience store sector, who are the lifeblood of many small rural communities and urban neighbourhood shopping areas. The Scottish Local Shop Report, published late 2015, was the first ever report into the importance of convenience stores to Scotland and was produced by the Scottish Grocers Federation. The report found that the majority of the 5,500 convenience stores operating in Scotland are run by small business owners and that the sector provides over 44,000 jobs with their value to the economy in terms of gross added value at over half a billion pounds per annum. Scotland has more convenience stores per head than any other part of the UK. Yet at present there is no cross-party group that can provide a forum for retailers and those in the supply chain to interact with MSPs, raising awareness of the opportunities and the challenges facing the sector. The importance of this sector was reflected by the number of MSPs who asked to join the group and the number of retailers who attended the inaugural meeting in total, over 50 people representing the retail trade gave up their time from running their businesses to highlight the importance of establishing this forum. It was agreed that if recognition was granted to this group, then subgroups would be established on the economy, retail crime and community support, providing background papers in order to inform MSPs and form the basis for discussion at subsequent CPG meetings. In session four, we had sectorial CPGs covering aviation, construction, oil and gas, and Scotch whisky. Retailing is the biggest private sector employer in Scotland, providing 13% of all private sector jobs. Given the number of jobs the independent convenience store sector provides and its importance to many communities across Scotland, I ask that you approve the creation of this new cross-party group. Thank you very much, Mr MacDonald. Do any of the committee members have any questions for the member? Mr Scott? Mr MacDonald, thank you. Um, do you think there are likely to be any overlaps with any other groups already established or not? I'm, I'm, not, of any, I'm not aware of any cross-party group whose sole focus is on the retailing sector. There is a cross-party group on towns and town centres, but if you examine the session four registration document for that cross-party group, you'll find no mention of retailing within its purpose, and the list of this mem sorry, the list of members that this group only includes one retailer. Uh, there is actually more local local authorities that are members of that group than actual retailers. I, I noticed uh, Professor Lee Sparks is he's the chairman of the towns as well. But anyway, that, that's terrific. That's fine. Thank you very much. No, any further questions from the members? Oh, I'd yep, just like Mr. To just have it on record that, that I'm, I'm a member uh, of this cross-party group, so just really declaring that interest. Thank you, Mr Johnson. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr MacDonald. We will be um, considering this at item two on the agenda, and you'll be informed of our decision as quickly as possible. So thank you for your time this morning. So can I invite Mr. Carlo? So good morning and again, thank you very much for coming to the committee this morning and I'd invite you to make some opening remarks. Thank you very much. Convener, um, the Jewish community settled in Scotland at the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, many of them uh, have of course subsequently come here as refugees. 
fleeing from persecution and like all others then and before and since they should be made to feel welcome and safe in Scotland without fear or favour. Uh, that community in the post-war years amounted to 48,000 people. It now amounts just to 6,000 souls across Scotland, uh, predominantly in the west of Scotland, but with groupings in uh, Edinburgh and uh, other parts of Scotland too. Um, they are a fiercely uh, loyal community. It's estimated that over 90% of the Jewish community in Scotland will have visited Israel. Uh, and the purpose of this cross-party group is to build bridges with Israel. Uh, what it's not is not to be a cheerleader for the state of Israel. Uh, there are very strong and passionate issues that are raised and which have concerns across a much wider range of political considerations. And there are other cross-party groups, of course, that represent areas in that region uh, which also have got a challenging political background to them. But it is designed to do two specific things. One is to build bridges in the cultural economic uh, field in particular. Uh, culturally, the Jewish community helped to establish the Edinburgh Festival here in Scotland. Economically, many of the medical pharmaceutical uh, products that we use in this country uh, come from, from Israel. Uh, and secondly, it is designed to tackle anti-Semitism here in Scotland. Uh, the Jewish community in particular uh, have felt uh, claustrophobic in many respects, sometimes under pressure, very often through um, a feeling that because their community is concentrated in quite limited areas, the broader discussion about anti-Semitism uh, and the broader discussion about Israel does not take place. So the purpose of the uh, cross-party group is to represent both those bridges that can be built, but also to tackle anti-Semitism here in Scotland. Thank you very much, Mr. Carlo. Can I invite any questions from the committee? Mr. Harvey. Thanks very much. Good morning. Um, just to understand the purpose, it, it seems from what you're saying and from what's written in the, uh, the paperwork that the purpose is threefold. One, to build bridges culturally, academically and, and so on, uh, as CPGs might do with many other countries. Um, the second is to present an alternative viewpoint. Uh, I think that's the, the way that it's uh, phrased in the paperwork. An alternative viewpoint to that singular one, which is to the fore at present. And the third is to um, further the goal of countering anti-Semitism. I'm just wondering... Uh, whether you felt that it, there was a reason why those three distinct purposes shouldn't be reflected in the title uh, rather than only one of them? No, I think the, 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 the intention underpinning the, uh, the group is specifically to build bridges with Israel across all of these fronts. Um, building bridges in terms of understanding as well as in terms of the specific areas that I've identified of education, culture and business, but building understanding as well. So it's building understanding with the state of Israel in the broadest sense and also building bridges between the community here in Scotland, the Jewish community here in Scotland and with Israel as well. I'm just wondering what, the, what you envision is the balance between these different aspects being. Obviously, presenting an alternative viewpoint to the one that is to the fore at present, as, as phrased in the paperwork, uh, is something that would perhaps attract people who, who support that other viewpoint, whereas countering anti-Semitism, I would hope, is something that all of us, whatever our views on uh, the issues of the, the actions, for example, of the State of Israel, something that all of us would want to, to support. So uh, I, I would be hoping that that aspect of the CPG's work is explicitly open to all, regardless of, of viewpoints uh, on issues regarding Israel. Yeah. The, this group is not in any way intended to try and create any division here in Parliament between uh, members. It has a broad representation from a number of different political parties. Uh, if you look at the groups that have uh, chosen to support it, it is not seeking to focus on uh, the international situation uh, exclusively. Many of the people who are uh, seeking to represent us come from 
completely different perspectives. And one of the things that we have uh, talked about in the preliminary meeting that we had is the potential for this group at some stage uh, to hold a joint meeting with the cross-party group on Palestine. Uh, with the, I, mean, I think it would probably be uh, beyond the Scottish Parliament and two cross-party groups to resolve a, <laughs> an age-old historical problem. But in terms of the spirit of the the, the, the title of this cross-party group, anything that the cross-party group could do in due course, and I think these things would have to be sensitively and carefully handled and with an understanding of what might be achieved from them. But if it built bridges in that sense as well, I think that's something the group would welcome to do, would be welcoming to do. There is no suggestion, of course, that if the broader agenda of the group uh, in the same sense that, you know, I have a great deal of support for the state of Palestine, but I'm not a member of the cross-party group in Palestine. It's not to suggest that any uh, political grouping or individual who felt this wasn't a group with the broader agenda they would wish to support, that that in some sense gives any suggestion that they are endorsing uh, anti-Semitic behaviour. The whole of the parliament, I understand and believe, is united against that. Thank you. That's very helpful. Mr Scott? Um, just <clears throat> in that regard, do you have any... Um, indication of the topics you may have under discussion in your upcoming meetings? Um, we're, we're very keen, uh, because of the cultural aspect of the group, to seek to have uh, some reflection of that in each of the uh, committee meetings that take place. Uh, culture in the broadest sense, that can be music, drama, creative arts, but to try and introduce uh, the cultural aspect into the parliament. Uh, yes, there are a number of areas that... Uh, that we want to discuss. We want to look at how, um, with the development of uh, groups uh, who are part of the uh, Centre for Israel Relations, who are a group of people who are not Jewish themselves and who are seeking to try and uh, ensure that the promotion of Israel takes place across the whole of Scotland, how that could be better facilitated. And we would hope to hear from uh, individuals within the business community, the cultural community and the educational community who would be able to help identify and take forward the links that we're seeking to promote. We've certainly had a lot of interest from all of those areas uh, from people who would like to participate in that work. Thanks so much. <clears throat> Um, I wondered, Mr. Carlo, um, if you could give us um, the reasoning for a, a group, particularly on Israel, and something that's not covered by other CPGs, and if you, if you, you're content that this is, is required on that basis? Well, I, I, there are a number of groups that have been formed in the Parliament representing, I imagine, similar objectives. Uh, there's one. I know there's one seeking to re-establish itself in Russia. There's been one in China. There's one in Taiwan. There is one in Palestine. There's one in Germany. There's one in Poland. I mean, uh, th there have been uh, developments, and many of these are underpinned in the first instance by a relatively strong uh, immigrant community. Uh, who can trace their roots back to the country that they wish to seek Scotland to develop links with. Uh, I, I think the greater the promotion of those, the better. Uh, we've met with, um, uh, I've spoken with Visit Scotland, we hope to discuss with Visit Scotland, uh, as we have with some of the uh, commercial airlines, the opportunities for the development of tourism uh, with Israel. Um, there are many people uh, who uh, uh, do make that journey, but I think that there's a tremendous opportunity for not tourism to Israel, but tourism from Israel into Scotland. So I think that in the same way that um, issues, that the promotion of individual countries can be uh, progressed with the establishment of cross-party group, I believe that's also true, true of Israel. Are there any further comments or questions from members? Well, thank you very much, Mr. Carlo. Um, we'll um, consider this under the next item on our agenda and inform you as soon as possible of the decision of the committee. Thank you, convener. I'm grateful for your time. Thank you. So we now move to uh, agenda item two for the committee to consider whether to accord recognition of the CPG, and I'll, I'll firstly discuss the independent convenience stores. Are there any comments from committee members? No objection. I think, yes. I think it seems like a very reasonable thing to, to do. Um, and um, obviously, uh, Mr. McDonald's given it a great deal of thought, and I would wish him every success. Thank you. I think um, probably I would like to concur with those comments because so I can ask that the committee are content to approve that CPG. Thank you very much. And next we move to building bridges with Israel and whether there are any comments from the committee on this area? I think it's perhaps just uh, worth uh, 
reflecting on the fact that uh, Jackson Carlow has clearly considered some of the potential controversies which could uh, arise from this group, uh, and so long as it's 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 clear that the the ethos he's suggesting is is the way things work, and that uh, those who who take a, a more critical stance in relation to uh, the actions of the state of Israel uh, or issues, for example, around boycott, divestment, and sanctions uh, policies would not in any way be excluded from participating in its work on countering anti-Semitism, and that it's not seen as a conflict between those two objectives. Uh, I don't think I have any objection. Well, okay. I'd be the same. Convener, I, I think that Mr Carlo has certainly given this a, a flavour of what they're trying to achieve, uh, and it might be a difficult balance to achieve depending on what the groups decide to do when they attempt to build bridges, uh, but at the same time I think that the idea and the concept uh, works well uh, and uh, would enhance potentially uh, tourism and, and culture and all of that. So I think it, it does have a, a real opportunity to, to make a contribution. Thank you. Are we content? Oh, sorry, Ms. No, okay. I, just I, I agree with uh, what uh, both Mr. Harvey and Mr. Stewart have said. Yes. So are we um, content to approve cross party group um, on building bridges with Israel? And um, we'll now move into private sessions. I'd invite members of the press and people from the gallery to leave. Thank you.